Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Tonight we're going on an adventure. This is the first adventure I'm going to take you on with Katie and Dylan. Katie and Dylan's adventures. So, get comfortable. Make sure that you're ready to relax and listen to the story. Let's begin. Katie and Dylan were 10. They liked to go on adventures. They were twins. They were born within two minutes of each other. Katie was two minutes older than her brother, Dylan. Katie and Dylan, being twins, meant that they had a very close connection. Lots of brothers and sisters have a really good relationship, but Katie and Dylan, I would say, were probably the best example of a brother and sister getting along really, really well. They got along so well and knew each other so well that sometimes they even finished each other's sentences. Katie and Dylan had traveled all over. They had gone to many, many places on vacations as they were growing up. They went to Greece, they went to Spain, they went to Alaska, they did tours, they did travels and journeys on ships, they flew on planes, they went on trains, they did so many cool things growing up. And they were 10 years old and they had seen so much of the world already. So much so that their vocabulary on things they knew and foods they tasted and places they'd seen and little bits of different languages that picked up along the way was quite extraordinary to say that they were only 10 years old. Both of them loved to read. Both of them loved history and loved to learn about the past. Both of them loved adventure stories. It just so happens that for the past two years, they'd done very little traveling in reality. Their parents had moved two years ago and their father had become very, very busy with work. Which meant to them that traveling had to slow down. Traveling on planes and trains and ships and cruisers had to slow down for now. But that was only in reality. Let me explain. Katie and Dylan shared a new room. One half of the bedroom was Katie's and the other half of the bedroom was Dylan's. Where they were living at the moment was quite small. It was only a two bedroom house. And that's why their parents got one room and Katie and Dylan shared the other room. But they loved the house, they didn't mind that. And like I said, they were very good friends and they got along really well. And somehow they managed to kind of work it out so that if they needed space, Katie would use the room for a while and Dylan would go do something else with his friends and vice versa. So they always got time to be alone in their room, even if they were sharing the room, they still managed to work it out so that they would get time alone in their own room if they needed. Their mum had just recently got them a new rug for their room. 
the rug was really cool. It looked like an Indian rug that you would get on some kind of street market. It was brown and red and gold and green and it was tiny, tiny little patterns. It looked very Middle Eastern, very Indian, as if it had come from far, far away, somewhere maybe in the desert, who knows, but they really liked that rug. They liked that rug because every single night when their parents were sleeping, they would sit on their rug crisscross applesauce, face each other, hold each other's hands and say, when we count to ten, we'll be ready to journey again. That was the magical secret conversation between the two of them that no one knew about. Not their parents, not their other friends, no one knew. It was like their own little secret and they said it just before they journeyed on an adventure. They would hold their hands up and hold each other's hands and say it. When we count to ten, we'll be ready to journey again. Tonight's story is all about one of Katie and Dilla's adventures. The house was quiet. They knew it was time to sit on the magical carpet. The magical carpet that would take them anywhere in the world that they needed to go. Anywhere. But that bedroom, that house, anywhere that they imagined they would go. Both of them had been very, very interested in the pyramids. The particular pyramids that they'd been reading about were the pyramids at Giza, just on the outskirts of Cairo. That's a place in Egypt. That's where they were planning on going tonight on their magical carpet. They both closed their eyes, held on to each other's hands, and said it. When we count to ten, we'll be ready to journey again. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. They'd only got to five, but by now in their imagination, the carpet that they were sitting on had started to rumble and shake just a little bit and start to move and very, very slightly start to rise up off the ground. Four, three, two, one. They were journeying very, very fast, faster than the speed of light, flying through the sky on their magical carpet flying across countries, across oceans, across valleys, mountains, just flying, flying, flying as fast as a bird, as fast as a plane, as fast as anything could fly. Up ahead, Dylan spotted the pyramids. The tallest pyramid of the Giza pyramids that they were going to, that's the one that they wanted to look at, was called Tufu. 
They aimed the carpet. They used their minds and tell the carpet where to fly. And the carpet landed behind the Khufu pyramid, the tallest of the Giza pyramids, right behind the Sphinx. Now, if you don't know what the Sphinx is, the Sphinx is a statue that guards the pyramids. The Sphinx is part human, so the head is the head of a male human, and then the back end of the sculpture is cat-like, designed to be the body of a lion. It's a very, very cool, mystical creature, and it's the guardian of the temples and the tombs connected to the pyramids. They were right in between both. Perfect landing, said Katie. Let's explore, said Dylan. Both of them always traveled with a backpack. In their backpack was all of the essentials that they needed. Water, cameras, a phone. They also had a snack, very high in protein in case they ever got lost and needed to survive. You never know where they were going to adventure to. They always traveled with some kind of string, some kind of elastic band, um, a com compass and a pair of scissors and a knife. Both of them were always fully equipped for whatever adventure was ahead. The first thing that they bumped into was a crowd of people. A crowd of people around a man with a monkey. The monkey was a very cute monkey, but the first thing Katie noticed was it was a very sad looking monkey. Katie said to Dylan, I don't think I like this. Something's not right. That monkey looks very, very sad. Dylan said, let's investigate. They got closer, more towards the front of the crowd, and noticed that basically all that was happening was the monkey was passed on to someone that wanted their picture taken with the monkey. They would have the picture taken with the monkey and then they would pass the monkey back to the owner. They stood in the crowd for quite some time and over and over and over again someone would pay to have their picture taken with the monkey. The longer they stood in the crowd, the more Katie started to read the monkey's thoughts. The monkey said, Help! I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be in the trees. I want to be with my friends. I want to be in the forest where I belong. Help! Katie heard this as clear as anything. She looked at Dylan and said, what do we do, Dylan? This monkey wants to escape. This monkey is not happy. It's not where it belongs. It belongs in the forests with the trees and the other monkeys. It doesn't want to be here all day having its picture took for money. This is not right, Dylan said. Sister, we need to rescue this monkey. Obviously, this is our mission for this particular adventure. No monkey needs to be taken advantage of like this. No animals need to be taken advantage of like this. 
Let's create a plan," said Dylan. They put their heads together. They had a ritual where they actually put their heads together. They would join foreheads as if intertwining thoughts, intertwining ideas. Somehow, when they put their heads together, their two minds became one, and it became very, very powerful. And anything that they needed to know. Anything that they had researched or read about in their books, on their journeys and travels in the past, would come to them. Katie thought, "What if I pretend I need my picture taken with the monkey, and then all of a sudden the monkey scribbles and scrabbles and starts to run off and escapes? What if we do that?" Dylan said, "We're far from a forest. How are we going to get the monkey to the forest?" I know what," said Katie. "I'll communicate with the monkey and tell the monkey to head to our magical carpet. That way, on our way home, after we've done whatever we need to do here." We'll be able to take the monkey to the forest where it needs to go, where all its friends and family is, and that way we can drop off the monkey and then carry on and go home. What do you say? Good idea," said Dylan. "Let's do it." Katie went forward, as if it was her turn to take a picture with the monkey. The monkey, still looking very, very sad, was passed to Katie, and Katie, telepathically using her mind, started to talk to the monkey. Okay, what I want you to do is make a fuss. I'm going to drop you and scream and cause a diversion. When I do that, you're going to run with my brother through the crowd, get on the magical carpet, and I'll join you back there real soon. That's the plan. The monkey's eyes got wider and bigger, and all of a sudden, the monkey actually started to look as if it was happier, like it had hope. Like maybe it was going to get out of this place. It was all fast and quick, and there was a, a kerfuffle. There was lots of people that screamed when Katie screamed, just from the reaction of Katie screaming. The owner of the monkey was so concerned with Katie screaming that he thought maybe the the monkey had bit her or something. That he wasn't at first paying attention to where the monkey had gone. He probably just thought the monkey was on the ground, while Katie was screaming, and then all of a sudden Katie said, "Oh, oh my gosh, oh that was so scary." Well, okay, <sighs> thank you.、Um, I've got to be going, and she rummaged her way through the crowd, ran very, very quickly to where Dylan was, with the monkey waiting on the magical carpet. By this time, the owner of the monkey had started to very quickly search, looking for the monkey, wondering where the monkey had got to. He started to look on the ground, look through people's legs, look through the crowd. He was rubbing it around very, very quickly. No time to waste," said Dylan. "Let's go." They started to fly fast. Very, very, very fast. Fast through the clouds. Fast through the trees. Fast away from that place. Until they got to where they needed to go. They hovered down until they made a touchdown in the middle of the forest that belonged to the monkey. There you go, my little friend," said Katie. 
you're back where you belong. The monkey, never looking so happy, jumped off the carpet, jumped into the nearest tree, scrambled up the tree, and jumped through all the branches, all the trees, until both Dylan and Katie heard the monkeys as if they were reuniting once again, making monkey noises, sounding very, very, very happy. I think our adventure was successful. Don't you, said Dylan to Katie. Very, very successful, said Katie. Until the next time, let's fly home. Five, four, three, two, one. They both opened their eyes at the same time. They were back in their room, back on their rug. They looked at each other and smiled. What an amazing adventure that one was, said Dylan. That was one of the coolest up to date, said Katie. Okay, time for bed. I'll meet you here on the rug again tomorrow night when the moon is high and our parents are asleep, said Dylan. Okay. You're on, said Katie. They both got into their beds, closed their eyes, and started to relax. They both thought about the monkey the Sphinx Pyramid. They thought about everything that they'd seen and everything that they'd done. And as they thought, they both felt very accomplished, helping Monkey get back to his forest where he belonged and getting to see the Sphinx statue and the biggest pyramid. It was a very cool adventure. And as they thought about it, they got more and more relaxed. They started to dream. And in their dreams, all different images of places they'd seen years and years ago started to flood into their minds. The colors, the tastes, the people, the places. They also started to think about all of their future adventures as they drifted deeper and deeper into sleep. Where would we go next? Where shall we journey to on our magical carpet? They slept long and very, very soundly that night. Their little bodies relaxed.
At some point in Katie's dreams, she was dreaming that she was a monkey, flying through the trees, talking to the other monkeys. 